Yeah. Hey, would you say uh, in, in my own survey of like early uh, Christian church fathers, it seemed like those that were arguing for the faith really weren't all that concerned with like the historical nature of the faith. Like, like yeah. with uh, Justin, you know, he, he had very emotional reasons. Like he, yeah. he wasn't convinced by any kind of like historical evidence or anything like that. He was just concerned with how it made him feel or how, how true he thought or, or felt the words were in those kinds of things. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think, I think other church fathers kind of say similar, not exactly, yeah. no, but no, totally. similar stuff. Um, yeah. And that's when you get, finally you get Eusebius, who's the first author we know, who appears to be trying to do a documentary history of Christianity. Like he's the first one who says he's trying to like prove Christianity is true through its, its history. Right. Um, rather than just asserting it. Right. Like, so, um, but when you look at Eusebius really carefully, he has no documentation until you get to about like the late second to early third century. Then he starts quoting all these documents, but for the first 200 years, he has nothing other than what's in the new Testament. Right. So he's got the New Testament. And that's it. He has no other letters, no other administrative documents, uh, no other accounts like he's got nothing. Uh, and so he has nothing. And, and if you go back and back further and further, it looks like no one had anything. And you look at like uh, Papias. We have quotes of Papias. Papias tells us what he was told, the oral lore he was told about the Gospels of Mark and Matthew. Everything he says is false. We know it's false. He's, he's, so he's clearly he was sold a bill of goods, like he was just believing weird rumors that were completely bogus. Uh, you know, like some Fox News, uh, you know, patron who just believes whatever Fox News says and doesn't like, you know, says all these wackadoo things, you know, like, oh, my God. Uh, uh, but no, that's what's exactly what Papias is doing. But it's very clear from Papias that he had no access to information prior to his own time. So there's nothing from the first century. He has no documents to quote. He has like no historians to quote. He's got no uh, letters or anything. He's got nothing. All he's got is the New Testament and rumors that are clearly wildly false. <laughs> um, and so this means that, the, the, uh, you know, there's one thing that I supposed about this, and we have plenty of the younger talks about this, about how when he was, he had this list of Christians that, that said, someone gave this anonymous list of, here are these Christians you should persecute. Uh, and he would be prosecuting them for illegal assembly. It was like a, a standard political violation. It wasn't, had nothing to do with Christian doctrine. It was just, you're not supposed to assemble without a license from the state. <clears throat> and so, uh, and so he goes and, you know, basically starts arresting and interrogating these people. And he finds that they're reporting that almost everyone on the list, they says like most of the people on the list weren't Christians anymore. They left some, he said even 20 years ago, right? Like they were, they hadn't even Christians in that long. Um, and he, and the point is like, he had to go looking for these guys. Most of them weren't even Christians anymore. And this, this is guy, he was basically the equivalent of the attorney general of the Roman empire for many years. He was uh, the governor of multiple provinces um, he was a lawyer. Uh, he, he'd done a ton of things for years and years and years across the empire. It's like one of the leading legal lights of the empire. And he had never heard of Christians in, or he'd heard of them like in passing, but he'd never encountered any in court. He had no idea what they were accused of. Uh, he didn't know what they were supposed to be punished for. Uh, which tells us two things, like the, the fact that so many Christians had left by the time that he was interrogating and that he'd never encountered them, that there were almost no Christians, right? Christianity almost died out. Like it, it's the quantity of Christians is so small that you have to struggle to even find them. And then when you find them, it'll be someone who left. who's not even a Christian anymore, right? Um, and so it starts to grow after that. And we see by the end of the second century, there's, there's a significant, like they have more institutions and more personnel. But this means that it, I think they lost their history. I think there was, there was kind of like this generational shift where these hucksters started pushing the historical Jesus off of the gospels. Uh, and there wasn't any, there's very few Christians left to push back like enough to cause second Peter and Ignatius to be written to denounce them. Uh, but there weren't very many. And so it was easy to pull this con off because most of their documents were lost. Like there was the institutions faded out. Like by the time that Tertullian's talking about church in, like the church at Corinth, I doubt that was the same church. I doubt that. I bet the church that Paul founded had probably gone extinct, you know, decades, lifetimes before. And then a new church church started and claimed to be the original Corinthian church, right? That's entirely possible. We can't rule that out. We don't, there's no like documentation to prove otherwise, right? So we, we don't know. So I think they just, I think they lost a lot of their history. So in the second century, they're making it all up. 
right? So like that's you get Papias just making stuff up, like the the weird story about Judas like swelling to the size of a wagon and exploding, like uh, it, blocking a wagon trail. He swelled so big because he had so many worms in his body. I'm not kidding. This is exactly what Papias says. Like they're just making stuff up, right? And, and so the whole history of Christianity is built on this fabrications. And we can see it all originates in these fabrications in the second century. There, there's no documentation from the first century other than what we have in the New Testament. And I would say first Clement. I think that's one letter I think is authentic and probably dates to the 60s AD. It's the only thing outside the New Testament we have um, that comes from the first century. 